as he stopped running towards the car, looked at me, I looked at him, he lifted the gun, pushed it forward, and then uh, discharged the weapon through my, my window. David Cameron dismissing Moat as a callous murderer in the Commons. I cannot understand any wave, however small, of public sympathy for this man. There should be sympathy for his victims, and for the havoc he wreaked in that community, there should be no sympathy for him. <laughs>
PC Raft Band also spent huge amounts of time fundraising and making public appearances after setting up the Blue Lamp Foundation. Almost 18 months after the shooting, David Rathband, who had struggled to come to terms with his blindness, was found hanged at his Blythe home on the 29th of February 2012. His funeral service at Stafford Crematorium was attended by family and fellow police officers on the 16th of March 2012. Following a three-day inquest, Coroner Eric Armstrong said Moat's attack contributed to PC Rathband's death. He said the circumstances of his injuries inflicted by Moat are well known. It is difficult, if not impossible, not to view the infliction of those injuries as the first step in a series which culminated in his death. After six days on the run, Moat was recognised by police and contained in the open. After six days on the run, Moat was recognised by police and contained in the open, leading to a standoff. After nearly six hours of negotiation, Moat was shot with an experimental wireless long-range electric shot weapon firing electrified rounds whilst Moat held a shotgun to his own head. He was later pronounced dead at Newcastle General Hospital following an inquest. It was ruled by a jury that Moat's death was a suicide and Northumbria police were not found to have been at fault. I'd like to pay tribute and celebrate the life of my dear friend, your brave officer and our collective hero, David. It remains the greatest honour of my professional career that David asked me to write our book, Tango 190. More important than that, of course, I made a friend for life. So there's all the information there about PC David Rathband. Um, it's very sad, really, what happened with him in general and what um, it led him to do with his own life, of course. and But none of us will ever know until we would have been put in those um, situations or in, you know, having those circumstances put upon us, how we would react, whether we could cope or not. Um, and obviously David felt that was his option. And, you know, I should imagine probably he felt it was his only option at that time, um, which is very sad. Um, you know, none of us ever want to see anyone in that situation, no matter who you are and no matter what you do. Anyway, we will now go and find the final resting place of PC David Rathband. Okay, so I've been having a good look around and I think I found it. That's right by the, the tree there. Wow, so many words on here. Police car, little police hat on top. A loving memory, in loving memory of an inspirational and courageous man. Police Constable David John Rafeband, Tango 190. On the 4th of July 2010, David was seriously injured in the line of duty and left fighting for his life. Despite horrific injuries and the loss of his sight, his courage, determination and fortitude enabled him to battle on. Out of his darkness, David founded the Blue Lamp Foundation to help other emergency workers injured in the line of duty. Due to his tenacity and the will to succeed, he became the pride of Britain. A life without sight became too much to bear. David left us on the 29th of February. 2012, aged 44 years. David was not blind to the shortcomings of others. Love would have been enough. And then there's some more messages on the sides there. So sad. And there's one from his brother there. I don't know if you can see that. So there we have the final resting place of David Rathband. And I've got to say, massive thank you, David, for your service and for the legacy that you've left. 
um, you know, in the foundation that you've set up, the Blue Lamp Foundation, to help other emergency workers that have been injured at work or their families if they've been killed in service. Um, no one can imagine what this gentleman went through unless they were in his shoes. And I should imagine that that would have been a very, very dark place to go uh, and very difficult to deal with um, under those circumstances. So bless you. Thank you, David. Uh, and his memorial, you know, his headstone is beautiful. It really is. Um, so well made and uh, obviously very loved by his family and very respectful there. So thank you, David. Now, those sorts of things can be controversial. Controversial. Uh, because some people have opinions on, you know, taking your own life and other people don't. Um, not for me to say. But I think unless you've walked in those shoes and understood what that person's going through, none of us can judge. None of us can say whether to take your own life is the right thing or the wrong thing. That has to be down to that person that's dealing with whatever they're dealing with and whatever issues they have. Um, as we all know, there are groups out there and support lines to help people. So if any of you guys are out there going through a deep and dark place at the moment or a tough time, you know, make sure you talk to someone, okay? That's the first thing I would always say is, you know, Things can be dark, things can be horrible, things can be tough, okay? Got a bit of the uh, wind blowing there. But before anything silly happens or has to happen, talk to someone first. Try and get someone to listen to you. If it's not a friend or family member, some professional body to listen to you because they deal with it day in, day out. Um, and, you know, they might just give you that little inclination that little spark to make you go whoa oh hold on a minute let's readjust this let's rethink this and put steps and plans into place to help me turn my life around and to get out of this darkness but you know it, it, I should imagine that the majority of us me included we've all been in a dark place at some point in our lives okay so talk to someone key real key anyway um, thank you as always. Sorry it got a bit deep there, but that's what happens sometimes with these sorts of visits. Um, please leave your comments down below. If you need um, someone to talk to, then make sure you go and talk to the professional body, okay? The little wind, the little wind things agree with me. Um, thank you for watching, and I will see you all on the next one. Take it easy. Ta-da.